This is the Sony Xperia 5 Mark III disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to heat up the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. And here's a look at the back. There are 11 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be removed. There's a sheet of graphite film which helps transfer heat, and the NFC antenna is located in the center. There are also numerous antenna lines which are these light gray color lines on the plastic piece. Here's a look at the other side. And these are the gold contact points for the NFC antenna which touch the pins on the motherboard, giving it signal. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This is the rear LED flash and light sensor. There are two coaxial cables that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. Here's a better look at the 8 megapixel front facing camera. And here's the headphone jack. There are two more Phillips screws on the motherboard that need to be removed. Now the motherboard can be lifted up and removed. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide, wide, and telephoto lens. The primary camera and telephoto lens both have OIS. There's a secondary microphone located on the top corner, and the camera connector can be disconnected by just popping it off. Here's a better look with the front shield removed. The motherboard is a sandwiched board layout, which is multiple boards sitting on top of each other. And it's the first time I'm seeing the SIM reader located in between both boards. So the SIM card and memory card reader is located in the center over here. From the looks of it, if that were to get damaged, it's going to be really difficult to get that replaced, since there may be a chance of damaging the boards if you try to separate them. Taking a look at the other side, the proximity sensor is located on top, the notification LED is located next to it, and there are two Phillips screws and a metal bracket covering the connector for the other cameras. Once those Phillips screws and the metal brackets are removed, the connector for those cameras can be disconnected by just popping it off. Both these cameras are connected via a single flex board. On the other side of the secondary microphone where the opening is, there's this rubber gasket and seal, which attaches to the adhesive over here on the frame to help keep water out. And there are two thermal pads on the back shield. Once the shield on the back is removed, we can see more thermal pads on the RAM and processor, as well as the ROM or memory. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up, but be careful, don't lift it up all the way since the coaxial cable is still attached to a flex cable underneath it. The coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. Looking at the speaker assembly, there's some graphene film to help transfer heat, and there are some antenna lines which are these light gray colored lines on the plastic. There's also a rubber gasket and a mesh filter on the speaker opening. The flex cable connected to the subboard can be disconnected, as well as the other end of the blue coaxial cable. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. And there's some adhesive underneath it holding the rubber gasket for the microphone. Here's a better look at the primary microphone. And here's the rubber gasket on the other side. The cable for the haptic feedback motor or linear vibrator motor can be disconnected by just popping it off and disconnecting it from the flex cable underneath. Here's a better look at it.
Once that's removed, we have access to disconnecting the screen cable. So if you need to replace your screen, you would have to remove the back plate, as well as the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly itself. Disconnect the cables on the subboard and the screw, as well as remove the subboard. And then you'd have to disconnect and remove the vibrator motor, which will then give you access to disconnecting the screen cable. At that point, you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply your new screen, making sure you run the cable back through the opening in the mid frame and reassemble your phone. To remove the battery, there are two adhesive pull tabs on the top. One's located on this corner and one on the other corner. I tend to find these type of adhesive pull tabs useless since they tear so easily. So at this point, we're gonna have to apply some isopropyl alcohol to the sides of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Once the battery is removed, we can remove this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, the screen, and charger port. Here's a better look at this flex cable and charger port. And there's a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself. Once the flex cable is removed, we can see a 3D layer of graphite which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. There's also graphite film underneath the telephoto camera and some graphene film underneath the wide and ultra wide lens. The top speaker or earpiece speaker is held on with adhesive, so if you need to replace that, you'd have to apply some heat and gently pry it off. The flex cable for the volume keys, power button, and fingerprint reader as well as the other keys on the side is held in place with this bracket or cover and there are three Phillips screws which are holding it down. Once the screws are removed, the fingerprint reader and cover can be pulled out. Here's a better look at that. The fingerprint reader can be disconnected from this flex cable as well. The fingerprint reader and all the other buttons have this rubber gasket around it, which make a nice tight seal when it's inside the frame. The rest of the buttons can be replaced by just pushing it in and removing it from inside the frame. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. And flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.